During this video, we're going to be looking at a incident response planning scenario and talking about the different stages associated within incident response planning. Uh, really, for the next two or three videos, as we're looking at incident response planning, disaster recovery planning, and business continuity planning, we're going to start with this screen just so you have the greater context of how these fit into each other. But this particular video looks at incident response planning. So let's go ahead and uh, look, go into that a little bit. Uh, when you uh, look at that, you're going to have some set of processes where you're looking at an unexpected event, that incident occurring. It may compromise you know, the availability, uh, integrity, or confidentiality of your information. And then what are you going to do to anticipate, detect, and mitigate the uh, effects of those? And so as you're thinking about those, uh, three of the kind of higher level tasks that you're going to have are going to be coming up with a list of incidents potentially uh, and, and their probability of occurring, uh, determining what your response would be to those particular incidents, and then uh, looking at what the response team, who would consist of that response team. So the, it, there were some kind of implicit components there that we'll talk a little bit more about, but, but let me set the stage early on. You know, incidents, not all incidents are the same. You've got to look at the probability that they're going to occur. When you're looking at your incident response, don't think about uh, that as a single phase. It's actually three. What do you do before? What do you do to plan for that incident response? What do you do during the actual incident? And what do you do after the incident uh, occurs? And then that security incident response team is going to be dependent on the incident. You can't just have one team unless you're a very small organization. But you can't just have one team. If you're having a fire in the building, uh, the response team is likely to be different than uh, you having a man-in-the-middle attack or a denial-of-service attack on your network. And so again, that security incident response team is going to be uh, particular to the particular incident or the incident that's ongoing. All right, let's go in and look at what a respo incident response plan typically consists of. There you go. You're going to start off with your statement from senior leadership. That seems to be a thread through all of these plans typically one or two pages long. Uh, you're then going to get into, or it could be shorter if it's a, a much shorter document, of course, uh, get into the purpose and objectives of uh, this particular plan. Look at the scope of this plan. Talk about the incident from a business impact analysis. What is the incident and what are the consequences um, uh, to that uh, organization based on that incident occurring? You then move into the structure, who's going to respond to it, and then what organizations, what you know, sub-teams, and what individuals have responsibilities during this particular incident. Talk about your prioritization of the incident. Performance measures to let you know if you did well or did not do well during your incidents. These are going to be your measures and metrics. And then what reporting is going to occur. Uh, during an incident. So at what point do you bring senior leadership in? At what point do you bring the CIO in or even the CISO in? It may be that, that within a large team certain incidents are handled uh, at a, a much a lower level. So again this gives you the components of a typical uh, incident response plan. Let's now move into talking about within that plan the different phases that you need to consider when an incident uh, uh, when planning for a particular incident. And I had mentioned this before, this is a, a, a before, during, and after. Uh, you want to <clears throat> look at the responsibilities of what you expect people to do and what processes govern what they do. So again, when you're thinking of any particular incident, what do I do before? What do I do during the attack? What do I do after the attack? As you're building this analysis, what should you do? Go back to the CNSS cube. Go back and look at <coughs> what is the confidentiality, availability, and integrity of the information. Where can it be uh, attacked 
while the data is at rest, the data is being processed, or the data is in transit. Um, how can you employ technology, policy, training, awareness, and uh, education to affect the outcome? So if you use that CNSS cube when you're evaluating an incident, you're going to catch everything. If you don't, you're going to miss something. So it's just a great framework, a great model for building an incident response plan. All right, let's now go in and look at, let's, you know, let's assume that you're a normal computer user and what we're going to do is look at some possible indicators, probable indicators, and definite indicators that you've got an attack going on. And I mention this because you're going to have to do the same thing associated with other incidents. What are possible indicators, probable, and definite? And it may be, it, you know, it's a no-brainer. You know, the, the, perhaps the incident that you're trying to respond for is a uh, earthquake. Uh, typically that's a disaster, but it could be an incident. And um, um, do you need possible indicators? Well, you could. You could be watching the reaction of animals and, and then using that if you're in an earthquake zone. But uh, if you're here in Atlanta you're, you know, you're, or in Georgia, you're not in an earthquake zone. And so you, you may only have definite indicators, i.e. the earthquake has occurred, uh, the ground is shaking, uh, as, as your indicators because of the low probability of it. But for other areas, you might want to flesh this out. And for other incidents, you may want to use these different types of indicators. So let's go into that a little bit. And again, what we're going to do is look at the potential of a computer attack from the perspective of possible probable or definite indicators. So let's start with possible. So possible indicators are you start seeing unfamiliar files on your um, computer, unfamiliar executables, some unusual consumption of computer resources or unusual system crashes. So this kind of goes back, first of all, these are just possible. That means it could or could not uh, be uh, uh, occurring. You may or may not have an, a computer attack underway. And it goes back to what we really talked about during our first lesson. Can you tell the difference between what is normal behavior and what is abnormal behavior? Okay, so when you start seeing some of these things, might be that everything's fine, might be uh, that you do have a computer attack and you need to pay a little bit more attention to it. So your action at this point is likely to be just pay a little bit more attention to it to see if any of the probable or definite indicators actually uh, fire uh, for an attack. So let's go on now to probables. So probable indicators uh, of an attack are things such as activity on the computer at unexpected time, the presence of new user uh, accounts, uh, reports of attacks in the media or uh, within the organization, and then notification from an intrusion detection system. That's what the IDS stands for. But if you get, get a notification from intrusion detection system, probable indicators of attack. That doesn't mean it has occurred. It doesn't mean that it's a definite, but it does mean that it is probable. All right, let's now look into some definite indicators that you have an attack. If you have dormant user accounts, accounts that nobody else uh, should be using and they become active, that is a definite indicator of an attack. Changes to any of the logs is a definite indicator of an attack. Typically the uh, hackers are going to go in and try to change those logs to erase uh, that they were there. Presence of uh, hacker tools on your computer, uh, notification by a partner or peer that you're attacking them uh, is a definite indicator and then a notification by the hacker themselves. So again, as you're looking at uh, intrusion uh, response, uh, these are going to be definite indicators uh, that you've got an attack underway and that you're going to need to take some activity. All right, well, let's go back to where we started. We started here looking uh, at the uh, incident response planning and where it fit in. We talked about uh, the different components of this, of incidents, incident response, and the security incident response team. We talked about the components within an incident response a plan itself. Talked about before, during, and after. Uh, and then we moved into some uh, possible 
uh, probable and definite indicators of a computer attack. Hope this has been helpful. Uh, during the next video, we'll look at disaster recovery planning, and I'll throw in a bonus. We'll talk about a specific incident. Thanks so much. See you soon.